All right, fantastic. All right, it's lit, we're live and direct. So this is Peachy Podcast, episode one of The Rebirth. Back with a bang. Sun's out, guns out, of course. I've got one and only gypsy kid with me. Um, Am I right in saying your name's Isaac, yeah? Yeah, my name's Isaac, man, but the couple of gypsy kids are out. Call me whatever you want, bro. Flipping brilliant, mate. Do you know what? I'm more chuffed at the fact that I remember your name. I've got a terrible memory. <laughs> I was going to say I've been hit too many times in the head, but, you know, boxing, in it. <laughs> um, so uh, let's get straight off the bat. So I understand you obviously you've had your, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm terrible numbers, 378 fight this weekend. Am I right in saying? No, so that, that was Friday. I just won a title. And oh, uh, I boxed man. yesterday. I boxed twice yesterday. Took me first proper fight, beat the lad. Then the pro said to me, a Cal, good friend of mine, said, Will you jump in with another big boy, big lump? I said, Yeah, but that time I was too fucked, but I got the rounds in. So, uh, 380 at the minute. Flipping heck. Unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think, isn't it? I mean, you've, you've literally fought more times than there are days in a year. Like, I mean, what yep. sort of, what motivates you most, like, to fight? Money. Yeah? Money, brother. Listen, I, listen man, I don't, I don't even watch boxing anymore, you know what I mean? It's just mm. the money it pays the bills, but thankfully I've had uh, listen, I've got a good reputation. I've never drunk no one. I've had some good love promoters now. I've been doing this for like 12, 13 years now. So I'm reliable, mm. I always turn up. I've got a good team of lads behind me. Yeah, we've got a good team of fighters. So we turn up, mate. We do what we gotta do. And thankfully, mm. mate, I've done this enough now where this is me living. I haven't got to work. I mm. at least do a little bit of work. This covers the bills, man, so we're happy, you know what I mean? Absolutely amazing. And like have you always been born a fire? Well, listen, I come from a travelling background, I'm a traveller, you know I mean so like Mm. But as, as an amateur, I've said this before, now if you believe me, but my local people who know me well, I had 47 amateur fights, yeah? Probably 20 of those I got stopped in. Not physically by the opponent. I was I used to be that scared as a kid. I used to stick. He's a throat, man. Do you know I mean? I was that mm. scared to get in there as a kid. It's unbelievable. My dad, you get fucking in that ring. You mean you got to get in there and that. But it worked <laughs> for me, man. Boxing worked for me. And then I was about 17, 18, come back, had a couple of seniors, got destroyed, got battered properly. Found out about yeah. kickboxing, had a few kickboxing. Then somebody said to her, this white colour, I said, fuck it, let's have a game, man. Mm. Then I trained a bit then, realised I could, you know, I'm all right at this now. I ain't been sick like I was as a kid. And it took off for me, man. Amazing. I mean, I've seen some of your, um, I've had a look through your um, your Instagram as well, and I've seen literally the most reoccurring theme going is seeing your opponent in the recovery position. Like, time and time again, that's like over and right, and that swing to the left. Yeah. Oh, but mate, I tell you, it makes me great for not heavyweight. <laughs> I'm only five foot nine. I'm short, man. I shouldn't be walking around at 15 stone. But yeah. listen, I do a few weights now. That's all I do. I, I PT my lads, keep his feet. But I do a few weights. I mean, I put a bit of style. I look well. But I think mm. I'm doing better now at heavyweight than I've ever done in my career. Yeah. But you're far you listen, that is? There's not too many heavyweights out there that's any good. I'm not being disrespectful. Though. There's some good mm. boys in the circuit. Don't get me wrong. And I've been in with them. Mm. But heavyweight, mate, you, they're just a big pub brawler. You just fancy you got the wide crowd. They come swing, give them a miss, they're out. Or you get in there, big lads can't punch, and I can. So I'll catch yeah. you, you're going to stick you in. I have found that a lot because there's a lot of, um, like, I find the sort of like the smaller you get, obviously, the lot more explosive, like, someone can yeah, be as well. Things. And like, the the board, yeah. really key. Um, and like, obviously, you've got to keep in your toes. I mean, I, I sort of weigh in around sort of like, I'm not a fight weight, around about sort of what, sort of super middleweight. I normally fight a welterweight. And I must admit, like, even with, like at the heaviest sort of thing, you just feel your shoulders are knackered. Yeah, like, my reflexes aren't as good. And, and as you well, say, if you go up against someone who can't move properly, it's so easy this, to catch you, isn't it? Yeah, but this is Saturday Sunday, but I'm faster now. Like, I'm faster than a little fat man. You mean, I'm pretty fast, you mean? So I think mm. this is the best one I've ever had. I mean, mm. as a Friday, so we spoke, was it Friday morning or something? The cafe yeah. was okay. I went and boxed and I worked out for a good pro of my Mac off. This is the, the fourth time I felt for this specific title. I won this one, thankfully. Boxed it everywhere, mate. I'm, Oh, I feel like fucking, I feel like I'm over, man. Mm. I mean, not didn't moving from the shot, but like throwing the shot, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, I'm doing well, brother, man, doing well. That's amazing. And like, what would you sort of like, is there like any end goal with regards to your boxing? Or is it just continue sort of making a living out of it? Or would you want to become a coach? Or Well, I do coach. I've got a team of lads. I've got 12 fighters myself. I mean, I ain't like, I ain't got the, the grades for a coach, but I've got 12 boxers I train, you know what I mean? I do my mm. PT now at my gym where I train, do my weights, power flex gym, who also sponsor me. So, yeah, you ain't know, fucking. I don't know, brother. I said to the missus the other day, I said, Look, you'd think that this is from boxing. This is for breaking into your dad's bedroom watching the date videos as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> they do say you're blind. Don't watch porn, kids. But, uh, listen, <laughs> other than my eyes, mate, I'm fit as a figure, brother. I know, listen, my arms are chest in good shape, my old child. My belly, my belly are never trained because I love a beer and I love food. I've been for food now to my birthday. I had a carving and a pudding. I ain't eating, right? You mean? 
Mm. So I'm just a keep you, man. Look, I'm paying the bills. I'm happy. I'm enjoying myself. I'm not going to hurt. Mm. In my head, it was 200, wasn't it? I had 200. Then again, I was fighting for Mad Goff and I had a phone call up with Big Mike Poddy. He does a burn up for you. Big Pod more. Mm. And he said, I've got you a fight here. I'm thinking, hang on. I'm due to box. But he went and put me up. I went and win a title. Then I'm a 200 for fight. So when the time I got to my proper 200 for fight, my 200 have won. I thought, fuck it. I've got to carry on now. Then my 300 again, I was done. And I stopped the geezer. I thought, I've got to carry on. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think now in my head, I'm going to get to 500. Mm. And don't get me wrong, listen, this this is my mate Kevin McCauley. Unbelievable pro, yeah? Unbelievable gentleman. If he'd have had a good arm life, he'd have been world champion, yeah? This mm. Peter Buckley, Christian Light, yeah? Both good friends of mine. They both made for him to pair about. So, I mean, I'm not saying I'm on tower with the pros because this one kind of, you only do three twos half the time, yeah? Mm. But when I hit that 300 milestone, I thought, listen, I'm up there with them boys now. Mm. It, listen, well, I can bring this book out because fucking everybody I box from day one till now, I write down. So I've got to book this thick and I won't ever reveal it till I'm done. I've got to book this thick of every boy I box and that's going to come out, man. And people will know I've never done no one. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think Eyes that's the next thing. 500 fights. No one can say I ain't done it. Nobody, I don't lie about an opponent. I don't lie that I box. You never get me get to a show and say I've boxed in that box. I'll box. That name's going on. It's going on Facebook, going on Instagram, going on the book. You mean? They bring that book out, and then you never know. It might be a bit of a good author. You know what I mean? Amazing, yeah. I mean, have you, have you, apart from obviously documenting your fighters, have you documented like, um, or even written your own sort of biography on like what you do and sort of like the emotions no, you I go should through? Do, and I should be doing this now, really. I've got another. Yeah. Well, I've got another 120 fights to do, so I should do, but I don't, mate. You know, mm-hmm. listen. As long as I got the proof of the name, and then they can speak to that lad. Did you box Isaac? It's all in the proof of you, mean. Mm. From the 100%. from the, the little DVs I've job for, like I've job for people, brother. I mean, people say to me, oh, I had a look at you. Yeah, you'll see me fall over for a geezer with a belly hanging to his floor. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If I get paid right, I'll flop over. You pay me, I'll go down anywhere you want. You want mm. me to turn up, then you got a good odds that gives turn up, you mean? Mm. But the people say, hey, look, I boxed Jimmy McCory, you know Jim McCory, former Bernacle World Champion. I boxed yeah. him last Saturday and I fucking done my hand. I don't know if you can see that. My hand's just... <laughs> I don't know how I managed to box this weekend, but I wrapped it up well. I hit him yeah. that hard, I fucking hit my hand in the first round. But I don't know. What I'm trying to say is, I'll get in there, have a war, train my bollocks off for a fight, and the next week I'll job. But yeah. how, can you, how can you do the same because it's all about the money? This, yeah. is, this is my living. Listen, do I love boxing? No. Do I love bringing 500 quid back to the midst of the weekend? Of course I do. I mean, that's yeah. how I look at it for us. You know what that's I mean? interesting. So, do you do you find them um, like have you do you find you've got quite a disdain towards boxing like as the years have gone on, or is it just something that it's just sort of like routine for yourself now? Like just going to a job like nine to no, five. No, that's and... routine. Like, like I spar yeah. now. Like, so I train at my gym, which is the weightlifting gym now. I'm good mm-hmm. friends with the owners, uh, Powerflex. A little shout out to you there. They mm-hmm. let me do my PTs from there. Don't charge me. Lovely people, good friends of mine and the partners, and. Um, it, I struggle to get there to train the lads to PT you know what I mean? Because it's it, it's just like I don't get nothing from it no more. I get I get from like them losing weight and it's like because I like the PTs they like the keep fitters, not the fighters. When they say, Oh, I've hit my goal this week, I've lost so and so, I'm feeling fit on the get up shot. But it's just I just hate it, man. Like we yeah. spar there every Tuesday. Yeah. I can't wait on a Tuesday morning for them lads to say, Oh, I've got the kids tonight, or some people say, so I ain't going to train. I hate it, man. You mean? <laughs> when I'm there and I do a few rounds, I'll get the top off and I'm, oh, what are you in? Then you yeah. think, oh, it's worth doing, but just for, just for a like to the Facebook, you mean? But I hate it, man. I hate yeah. it. Yeah. It's the that initial, isn't it? This, brother, but the best part about this log, so Friday I was local. Um, what was it? West Brom? West Brom, Answer, sort of thing. West Brom, sort of thing, yeah. I've got the missus there, my daughter there, and a, a few locals. That was nice, you mean? And especially with the title, but then we boxed, where was he yesterday? Me and my mate Nathan. We fought for me, Nathan Massey. We went to Shell Island. Four mm. and a half journey there, bro. We're just chatting shit on the way there. But that's the best bit. That's what I enjoy. And then seeing all the Welsh lads, seeing Craig Winter, ex-pro, we box Kalzak as an amateur. Mm. All people that means. That's the buzz for me now. Not getting mm. in the ring. Getting in the ring, just get in. I'm doing my job. Get out. If I get the winter bonus, it's all about getting in, not getting out. Taking that car now, you in. 100%. I, I read it all the time where um, a journeyman's like, I'm not saying you're a journeyman, but obviously, like, you know, you've had... Well, well, I'm out. That's what I am, mate. That's what I am. Yeah. Um, and it's like going in there and sort of like, you're just trying to stay as injury-free as possible. Like, what's like the normal sort of tactic for yourself going into a fight? Well, like I said, so I, I boxed Jimmy last week, put my hand. The pain, listen, it takes a lot to make me... Cry. Although I'm a soft touch with the missus and my daughter, you know what I mean? But like, it takes a lot to me. When I got home, the pain, I had tears in my eyes. 
I mm. thought, fuck now, what we're going to do? I'm out for weeks and this is the income. Do you know what I mean? I'm not used to earning the money in the weekend now. But I always did really well. My name gave me some things. I always did really well. And I boxed three fights this weekend, winning two, just off the jab. I didn't throw a right hand. Yeah. Winning a title include, I stopped the lad with a body shot um, with the jab, with the left hand. And I won the second, my second, my first fight yesterday, just off the jab. I'll get the best jab given, man, I think. Because mm. they don't expect me to have a sharp, be as sharp as what I am, you mean? So Get that snapping. It's the jab, I reckon. Like, the jab's my mm. best. Keep it. But look, if I can throw the right hand and I catch you, you're going to get down. Not that I'm a big puncher, but mm. I'm short and you're not expecting it, you know what I mean? Mm. I've noticed that. That's one of the um, one of the things I noticed through some of the fights I've seen just on your highlight reel, is that overhand right that comes through. And they, again, as you say, like, I, I find, especially white collar, they're quite chinny, aren't they? So they sort of, yeah. when they punch, chin comes up and it's like, it's just game over. The Ducking right, underneath the and then straight The funny thing is, though, is to make you laugh. So anybody knows I've got a decent jab, I'll throw that jab, then the backhand, yeah, the overhand. Mm. So why don't they train for it? I've got two shots, mm. and I'm still catching people. All you got to <laughs> do is keep away from that, you mean? It's crazy. Yeah. How much That's notice do your opponents get for you? Say again? Uh, how much notice do your uh, opponents get? Oh, they probably get? Get, get a good, 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 like, you know. I'm booked now, like I say, I'm fully booked now, up to Christmas, frankly. Mm. Like, I don't know if you, you, well, you're on Facebook is that semi-pro boxing status yeah you'll yeah. never ever see me put a post in there because frankly I don't need the work pro would bring me week in week out and I'm, I'm booked for the year good friend of one now Fahim Khan the ex-pro himself he sent me a message the other day I'll show you it's on my phone he said oh, it, look these are the dates for next year 12 he has a show every month and I'm in every month for him that's a mm. law for outside. I'm fully mm. booked for him that's, that's, yeah. so if I just box next year for him that's 12 fights for the year, you mean? Yeah, it's crazy, um, isn't it? I mean, as well, like, um, I mean, I've encountered even just I've I've done it only white collar. I've encountered a few sort of um, like, and on the main sort of like stage sort of thing, um, uh, journeyman. He sort of come in, they'll do a couple rounds and stuff. They'll jump in, jump out and stuff, and um, and it, it is incredible. Like, you know, they're doing one fight sort of like the day before, then they do a fight the next day, and then literally a few days later they fight again. I suppose it must be quite hard to get all the training in as well. Like, do you have like a particular routine that you follow to keep yourself? Well, listen, in mean, but listen, this is what I went. I went back pro last year. Good friend of mine, Tom Murray from Manchester. You probably know Tom Murray. He's mixing mm. in with the pros now, and Giles Carter. Yeah, they got me back pro, and uh, they're managing me. They got me a fight, and uh, it's just different stuff, mate. Yeah, I boxed a big, big, tall black lad. Got a fight in Belgium, six and zero. Big puncher went out there, mate. And when I realised he went that big of a puncher, I blew myself out trying to stop him. Mm. And I ain't used to these three minutes. It's just the pro level, mate. It's different level. So I'll mm. never put myself on par to any journeyman in the pros. Because with me, I can just like say, I've had a beer today and a carvery. I'll come box tonight. Mm. It's different level, bro. I'm not saying I'm good at what I do or being mm. big Eddie. It's just it's just come natural to me, man. I could do three rounds with anyone in the country, and I'll stick to that. When it comes to the four and five, that's when the decent boys, that's when they start taking you apart, you mean? But I'm fit enough to do five rounds, I reckon, with most mm. blokes. So mm -hmm. training, like I say now, so I've got a good little kid now, Danny, to me. I'm training three, four times a week with the PTs. I've got my lads that slip in once a week as well. So I'll get up tomorrow now. I'll have a bit of breakfast. I'll go to the gym. I'll do a PT. If my hand weren't eating, I might do a few biceps. Mm. I'll come home, have a bit of food. That's me done today. I don't go to the gym and have a set that, oh, I'm doing shoulders today. I'm going to get myself a bit of bad working. It's just, it, I don't enjoy it, brother. I mean, it's just... I'll do something when I'm there if you mean I'm in the mood. That says a lot about your discipline, I suppose, isn't it? Sort of thing. Because if you're doing something repetitively that you don't like, but you're still doing it because you know it's good for you, that says well, a lot about your character and your resilience. I had a fight out. I'm so undisciplined. I said this the other day. My dad always said to me, God love me. He's passed away now. You mean? My, big, my biggest support with dad was, you've got to fucking run. You've got to run on the road, man. If I've got a phone call now, yeah, let's say, I don't know, Frank Warren rang me. Says, right, I've got you up. Tyson Fury, I was fighting like a second, mate. Can't stand the bloke. But listen, I'm, I'm still ranked heavyweight. I'm 54, 55 in the country. So effectively, I'm the worst heavyweight boxer Britain's got. Yeah? So I'm blast, okay? So if I got a phone call, I said, listen, he's 100 grand, you're fighting Fury. I wouldn't do nothing no different. Mm. I'd probably spar once a week. And that's mm. no disrespect to the game, to Fury, to anyone. I oh, know I'm boxing for that under grand, yeah? So I'll stick. If I do things at my routine, brother, that's when I start panicking and worrying. I've got to be mm. myself. Like, I don't want before a fight. Mm. You get people now, good people, good good coaching at, at the fight. Now, oh, do you want to warm up? I said, no, I put my wraps and I put my gloves on and I go in the ring. If I start mm. warming up, I'm vasting my face. 
that brings a nerve that brings out a different Isaac. I mean, mm. so it just it's for me it's just be relaxed and do what I gotta do. Mm. Do you know so that's, as, that's as quite, a doctor, um, I'm not disciplined at all. Yeah. I, you know that's I mean? incredible though, isn't it? Because I think just what you said about the um like not doing the warm up and sort of not it's almost it links in with just not overthinking, isn't it? And just going in there and just like, that, that's flowing, isn't it? Going with the flow. Well, just he said, I'm just sitting there now. now I'm dying to throw this right and I'm doing with me and Nathan there, my good friend Nathan, he's put my glove on twice. I've put the glove on. Is that much pain up? My glove's throbbing. I said, no, take it off, retape it. And we got it then talking. I've done this. What I've had to do is put a bit of, um, what's that? I don't even know what it's called. That like the blue wrap. To, I like, like rock tape. So, it, so I can't shut my hand in my glove. And yeah. I could know I can't for it. But I'm just, I'm just relaxing and moving, flicking that jab. And he said, I can't believe I've relaxed you, man. I didn't think I was relaxed. I was panicking, thinking, shit, if he comes at me now and rushes me, I can't even block because if I get hit there, I'm squealing like a pig. But it's just, you know, <laughs> look, thank the Lord, man. Listen, this is just, this is just what I do, and uh, thankfully I've been a little bit successful at it. You know what I mean? But for giving back to the sport, dieting and running, no. you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what you see it all the time? I, I mean, I'm not too bad for this, but I've seen a lot of people where they go through that strict sort of eight, 10, 12 week sort of diet plan where they're really, really strict, restrict themselves. Yeah. They have the fight, they blow up about 10, 15 kilos literally within a week after the fight. And it's, it's just unbelievable like to see how quickly that sort of mindset can sort of change and switch off. Of then, yeah. And like for me, I, I, I get that as well. Like if you're way too disciplined, way too restricted, like you just, your mind just goes into sort of overdrive, I find. Like it's, yeah, well, it's well, listen, look at Ricky Atten, man. Look, mm. I think Ricky Atten naturally is a fat bastard. Look how he walks around now. He must <laughs> have to kill himself. And listen, no amount of money in the world is worth that suffering and arguing with your missus and drain yourself for food and that. But I will mm. say, we'll, I don't know if you know Kane Baker, good friend yeah. of mine from there. We go, I boxed him in white collar with 12 and a half, 13 stone. He wouldn't admit to this, but he's a little fat bastard. Look at him now. He's, he's got a lovely missus behind who supports him, Coral, yeah? Mm. They like that together, yeah? He's trained his bollocks off. He's changed his life. He's boxed mm. for fucking... Eddie all three, four times. He's gone from 12 stone to what? With featherweight? Mm, that's it, yeah. Fighting, fighting, getting big paydays, fighting Conor Ben, winning the Midland area as a pro. So, it does. It, listen, you've got to do what you want to do, you mean? Mm. What's too true? And I think me just getting in there, having a little roll, a little tap around and living the life I live, it's good enough for me, you mean? Mm. Awesome, mate. It's a level of sort of contempt, isn't it? And I think that's brilliant. It's an happy um, medium, I mean... like... Say again, it, it's a happy medium, I think, because if, mm. if I change things and, like I say, and try and do that extra training session and get into this camp mode, it, my head goes there. I think, fuck me, I'm in a serious fight here. Then, then I'm arguing with the missus, and then like, my, uh, you know I mean, then, then I probably end up going and having a fucking sniff or something, stuff because yeah. I'm trying to deal with all these fucking like emotions. And if I got, like I say, if I got off a title period next week, mate, I'd just still do what I'm doing now. I'd PT my lads mm. tomorrow. I really wouldn't. I can't. I couldn't train. You mean, as long as I get the glove on, I'm getting in that ring, do you mean? So what yeah, they don't definitely. know what they have, will they? I find, I do find there's an element of intensity as well when it comes to boxing. I mean, for myself, any time I've signed up for a fight, it they, they goes through those few moments every now and then during the day where I'm like, I'm thinking about the fight, I'm thinking about what I've got to do, thinking about this, thinking about that sort of stuff. And it, it just becomes quite yeah. tense, doesn't it? Whereas if you just go with the flow, and I've found the more fights I've had, just yeah. the way more relaxed I am with things. Obviously, training-wise, yeah. I'm quite intense. But like even like the prep for the thing, I mean, if I've got a long wait for my fight, I'll go to sleep for a few hours. I might meditate. I might just dance for a bit. Yeah, it is it's absolutely it's mental. And then you see some people. I find I've I've watched a few white collars, especially. You can almost tell within five seconds who's going to win the fight just from how tense someone is. Yeah, you know of course, I mean? yeah, yeah. You've got someone who's loosey goosey moving around, heads all over the place, brilliant. You've got someone who's like that. It's like oh, it's going to be game over straight away. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean? I think for me, so pick up on what you said there. I think for me. If I didn't fight as regular as what I do every week, guaranteed, I don't think I could do it anymore. I couldn't go a month and then not fight because the time I'm mm. fighting again that month, the nerves would build back up. Because of course we all get nervous. Mm. If you look into, oh shit, I'm in with so and so and he's a puncher and so that. Mm. I think being active every week, having two a week, some weeks, keeps me on my toes, keeps me busy. If I was to have a layoff, remember from lockdown, I didn't box through lockdown, obviously. Mm. And that comeback after that, mate, fuck me, I was that nervous. I didn't know. It wasn't excitement. It wasn't scared. It was like, do I want to be doing this? That that an anxiety I've never felt mm. before. Like, shit, what am I doing, man? You mean? So I don't feel mm. I could do for that again. I think that that bottle me now. But uh, mm. thankfully, man, touch wood. I'm still getting busy. I'm still active. So, mm. do you ever worry about like any sort of like injuries that sort of could occur, sort of like long term? I don't get injured, but like 
I bought these new 10 ounce gloves, man. I don't know if we went on my bag is now. Fucking, um, I'll get deer from it as well. They fucking pissed me off, man. But I mean, <laughs> it's not the gloves, you think it just the way Jimmy that out, he, he's fucking the man's that out, his head's like a nail. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he's done burn up and fucking, he's been fucking in eyeballs, and he. I eat him that mm. hard, man. Fucking hell, meet me hand off. This is the only injury I've had, like, well, when do you, well, when do you ever see him in a photograph with a, with a, with a black eye? Do you know what I mean? That's what I was going to say, yeah. Whatever yeah. brother works for me, I'm not getting hurt. And if, mm. listen, I've been stopped twice in my, in my career, okay? Proper stopped. Mm. If you see Isaac, he's getting stopped. No, you see Isaac, you've taken a knee. Mm. If I get in there with a puncher, and there's a chance there that I'm going to get caught or hurt, I'll get out before he even gets a chance to throw that shot. Mm. It's not about pride with me, it's about, like I say, coming out to my partner, coming out to Lisa every night, you know what I mean? And having the money in the pocket. So mm. you'll never see me get proper out, mate. The two that did, they did a good job. But that was back when I was a hungry fighter, you know what I mean? When you don't mm. know no different. You get dropped, yeah. your head's gone, you think, come on, let's have it. Then bang, pull you out, you're on gas and air. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's crazy. Do you know what? Because that's, that's what happened to my last fight. Uh, my last fight, boxed quite well. And then literally towards the end of the last bit, uh, got a sort of like right hand, and I've turned my head as well, so it's popped me just around the back of the ear. Yeah. I've gone down, and literally, I've thought, thought, right, there's two things I can do. I can either sort of ship off a little bit, or thought, no, I've got to go for it. And I'm quite surprised, I was quite lucky in a way that I didn't get knocked out because I was, I was walking into shots when I was going in. Yeah. I was literally like, no, I've got to try and get the rounds, got to try and get the rounds. So I was just kept, li- kept getting clubbed with the same hand every time. Was, my head just completely went. That's it. Well, <laughs> it does it, let me make Kieran Box yesterday. I mean, just tough Kieran Thomas, tough as fuck fighter. I said, Key, mm. mate, you got to stop fighting like yourself. He fights with his fucking his heart and his chin. If he gets mm. tagged, you're throwing your throw, Brad. Not me. Mm. If I'm getting tagged, it's very rare I get tagged. Then listen, my hands are up and I'm moving. I ain't going to mm. have a rally with someone who can take my head off. Not a mm. chance of me. But like I said, I think that's, that's genuine mode kicking in. Get out safe. No matter who, how old class the opponent was, man. I mean, perhaps say to you that oh, I've got a novice. Need to walk him round. I boxed a novice in love with the glove the other day. I mean, I had to go under a different name, so I didn't know how many. How many fights I've had, and I'm happy just the job and box lock. But yeah, you know, box lock. I'm not very good. And the geezer was fucking. Pr- he means you've seen that kickboxer from like Tom Poe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he was punching the wall, he'd be fucking shaking like that. He hit like a fucking horse. I thought, what the fuck? He's a novice. It's better to go in there with an experienced lad who's trying to box. Mm. Is it? Is that hammer fisting me on the back of the head? And, and I'm getting mad at this stage, thinking, but well, I took the fight. You know what to expect. Because these mm-hmm. novices, they don't, they've had eight weeks training. They don't know what they're doing. They just want to get on the poster. Text on it, doesn't mm-hmm. they? So you've got to be careful. Mm-hmm. They're the forwards I don't love. I'd rather get in there with an experienced lad, a decent mm-hmm. lad. The money's good. And I know I can get out and say if I need to. Like, I boxed a dude the other day on there, Scott McHugh's show. He paid me well, looked after me. Uh, what's his name now? Danny Mitchell. Mm-hmm. I've, I took the fight. I didn't realise. Asked. He said, look, got Danny Mitchell, decent lad. Five rounds, said Sam. Give him, give him my, my quote of what we're a charge. No problem. I thought, oh, that's a bit too easy. I should have some more. I put him on Google, mate. He had fucking a 10-year stint with the UFC. If you want to Google him, Danny Mitchell. I don't know yeah. how long the fight he had in the UFC, but he was there for 10 years. But like I say, mate, listen, he's a good, nice, tall boxer. I boxed him. I did four at the five rounds because I knew. He didn't stop me. I stopped myself. I knew I was boxing the next day. And I'm fucking knackered. I mean, I'm going to have to get eight in that last round. I've done four rounds with a top contender. He's trying to make his way into boxing now. Got my money. Happy days. He's got the win. We're all going on safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, you, you'll never catch me, mate, getting in there with a wall. If I'm getting tagged, I'm making that body shot look good and getting out of there. Yeah. That's the, do you know what? That's admirable as well, to be honest, because a lot of people wouldn't like come out and say that, would they, sort of thing? But, and I think that's that's quite a nice sort of level of sort of humility you're sort of showing there, you know, because it's it, it is a dangerous sport, as you say, and oh, you've shit. got to look after number one, isn't you? So you can go home and look after everyone else as well. So getting out at the right time, it's a wise, and it's a really sort of, it comes from an experienced sort of head, I think, as well, you yeah. saying that. But don't you know get me wrong, lot... I turned up to win that fight. I did try. Yeah. yeah I did throw a good few. Yeah. I don't, never, I never go in a fight aiming to lose unless I've been told. Mm. You've got to walk him round. He's, he's doing a charity. So-and-so, his mate just died. He's mm. cut him under quick. Do what you're told. You mean? Then, mm. you know, you flop, you change your name, you put a vest on, you have a pair of shorts, you, just, you know what I mean? But like, I always turn up, mate, if I've got a good name, I'll always try, because 10 text, one shot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Then I knocked him out, and he's fed in the UFC. Boom, my career's back on up. But he's a tough dude. He's too tall for me. I couldn't get near his jab, but, you know what I mean? But I've done my four rounds and got out there safe. What's your, um, what's your opinion on sort of like the new generation of boxing now, with, you know, with like the social media sort of mixed into sort of like, uh, um, like professional sort of pro ranks and such? 
Well, listen, it's, it's fucking... A lot of people are arguing me over this, listen. Mm. You're going about Jake Paul, yeah? Yeah, the, sort of like the Jake Paul's, the KSI's. So, so Jake Paul, yeah? He's selling out venues, complete venues just off his name. Mm. How can that not be good for boxing? Mm. Definitely. KSI, he's a little black dude, used to play computers. Mm. He's still training these bollocks off. Fucking he can box, man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think he beats Tommy Fury comfortable. Yeah. So you've had your first, my personal opinion. Let him mm. carry on. Look at Logan Paul. Listen, I'm a big wrestling fan. This, this, you mean this, he's doing things in fucking in what a couple of months he's been there. Sure, Michaels are doing 20 year again. Mm. You've got to let him do that. Listen, they're training the balls off and they're doing the good at what they do. You mean? Definitely. You've got to I give him credit, man. Listen, I wish I could do it. Yeah. What well, I don't agree with. Uh, this, uh, this ultra white collar, yeah. Mm. Train out weeks, get in there. There's been two deaths there I know to. Mm. If you're at amateur gym now, mate, you're still working on your footwork in eight weeks. You're mm. not even sparring. That's dangerous, mate. That's deadly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. my personal opinion. But listen, if you can sell fucking tickets, and which he is doing, headlining events in Saudi Arabia, fucking let him carry on and do it. Mm. The pros that are arguing, oh, I had it the hard way, because you're not a golden boy. You wasn't for Frank mm. Warren. You should have just been a journeyman and got on with it. Do you know what mm. I mean? That's my That's opinion. Thing. No, I think I think you're right. I think what it touches upon as well, and it really exposes in a good way, is how innovative that sort of generation is, like in yeah. terms of getting their name out there and really selling tickets. And it's giving it's giving those people that aren't so much sort of heard of, you know, a big chance to step into sort of the limelight, you know, and show what they've sort of yeah. got. And I think furthermore as well, it's giving a good lesson to boxers who are aspiring to be professionals, you know, the importance of media and the importance of being media trained and being sort of a little bit more um, extroverted in a way, do you know what I mean? To really get your name out there and show yourself off as a personality as well as a fighter. And as you say, they're training balls to the wall. Like, I mean, Jake Paul, I think I've had quite, I, I used to hate him. I used to think he was a pain in the ass. But when you actually watch his training and that, what he's sort of doing, right, he's, 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 he's a little bit more rogue, isn't he? Unbelievable. Yeah. But look, look at the shape, don't he, man? I wish I could get in that fucking shape. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's tremendous. So I um, just wanted to touch upon, obviously, I know you said about uh, Tommy Fury uh, getting beaten by KSI. What was, what was that? I just, I'm not a Fury fan, mate. Couldn't stand it. Yeah. Listen, I'm a traveller, mate. They're travellers. Yeah, listen, I'm just not a fan, brother. If I go into this with you, I'd fucking have my own family fall let me over it. They're mm. just something about them, mate. Don't sit with me. Like Tyson mm. Fury, yeah? King of the Gypsies. No. I'm a Gypsy. He's no king of mine. My father's my fucking king. Nobody mm. should call him that. I won't call it him, yeah? Mm. You can't take away the dude's skill. Yeah, he can box. Mm. He's got that ball. He's running from all the big fights. He's mm. the champ, but he's demanding that much money. Brother, he's got that much money. He can never spend it in his lifetime. Never mind his kids' lifetime. He's a greedy bastard. Um, I remember the first time he boxed Walder, he said he's giving eight million to, to the armless. Eight million to get all the armless in the country out of uh, in home money. Mm. Mate, he's just one of these. I think he's all all put on, mate. You know what I mean? I like, do it's, health, it's like mental health. I sent me wrong. The geezer was thirty stone. Yeah. If mm. I had money. I had a geezer telling me when to eat, what to eat, putting it in my mouth. I could lose mm. 10 mm. I think he's all a fast, mate. That's just my opinion on him, you mean? Know? I'd mm. fight him like a shot tomorrow. I do. I find that's a really common um, perception as well. Uh, a lot of people have to share that same opinion as well uh, in terms of how he sort of comes across. And I must admit, I don't know if you watched the documentary or even gave it time of day. A lot of people I know didn't want to watch it, but he didn't show him in a great light. Um, it showed him to be quite a difficult person. And I think, obviously, I was shocked to hear that he's obviously got the Usyk fight um, signed and stuff like that. Well, I'll, not see the same it, I'll, 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 uh, I'll fucking, I'll see that when they're in the ring about touch gloves. I think that's a load mm. of bollocks. Definitely. You know I mean? Now I'm thinking but the like, same. As the Tommy Fury, mate, listen, I logged it. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sapped. I watch all these sapped programs with the missus. I logged oh. him in Love Island. I, he grew on me. He's a good kid, mm. nice kid. But since that, mate, he's, he, I think he's, he's still trying to be... He don't want to be a boxer, mate. He's doing it because daddy's making him. He wants mm. to live his life in the line. Like, let him do it, bro. I just think KSI's got to bust him up. Beat my points. Mm. my opinion. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think that'd be an exciting fight. It brings that sort of question, doesn't it? Sort of, you know, to what if. And I must admit, that some of the pro fights that have happened recently, I've sort of not watched as much or been invested in. When it comes to this sort of social media crossover, I have yeah, to admit, I've been a little bit of a buzz, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the media's fantastic. I mean, it was a really... <laughs> There was a really good point in that sort of face-to-face -face as well. And I do think Tommy, as far as having a head on his shoulders, is a little bit better than KSI in terms of maturity and stuff, because he's been around the block. 
But there was a bit in it that did crack me up, and it was literally asking him about his name and stuff like that, and he couldn't pronounce his name. But they cut that bit out. But it was it was so funny. It was like classic. But I think I think in terms of that fight, again, it can go either way. And as you say, it takes just one swing. And that's why he's proven he's got that sort of you know he's got that power. He's got that sort of tenacity, isn't he? So I think um I think it'll be a close fight. I'm convinced that Tommy wins, but I think he makes a meal out of it. That's what I think. I don't yeah. think he's going to win as comfortably. Well, he, as I know he boxed, remember he boxed that Scotland. I don't know his name, but I, I remember seeing him in the white collar a few times when I went down to Scotland. It was his mm. second or third fight, and he made a meal of that. He made it hard work, and he should have blew him mm. away. Mm. So, listen, brother, we all have good and bad nights, and we listen. Mm. Tommy Fuse, a likable kid. I'm just a fucking. I think Chaos would nick that one for me. Mm. You know what I mean, do you think? Um, do you think with him he's got like a bit of a sort of like nervous energy around him, sort of thing, when it comes to when he boxes? Like, well, like he doesn't want to get hurt. I think he's that. He's like he, he don't want to box. He wants to see the guy. A little mm. kid now. He's got a, he misses. He just wants to do his own little finger being that long. Like I think this mm. this fury main is making him want to box. Mm. Make kick like he's pushing him now. You got to fight. You got to fight. You. I mean, you got another brother gone pro now, haven't they? Is mm. it them? They're all in red. He's going to be sixty, have not they? <laughs> That's one thing I did notice because I think um yeah they, they, I mean I know I know I know a Fury Fury. I know there's a, another bloke. Uh, another Fury who's the same age as me, looks a few years older though. <laughs> so he's, there's, there's loads, there's loads of Furies, I must admit. Um, you, what would you say again? Sorry, mate, quick you off. You know you with Fury. And that's a yeah. dude I respected. Yeah, mm. his cousin. He gets in there with anyone, yeah. He's had two or three world title shots. He never got no one. He always gives it his all, man. That's a dude mm. who should get some respect against the long lot. And he ain't getting it, is he? That's it. When, he that's gets beat, thing, when he gets beat, mate, he says he's been beat, not like fucking. I reckon his Tyson never got beat. He'd pull a Davy Day. Oh, with my toe. You know what I mean? Mm. And when he lost the let's go. That's just the aura I get. I'm like, listen, I'm just not a fan, brother. Mm. Who would you say your um like your best sort of like boxing idol would be? So as a as a young kid, when I first walked into a uh, an amateur gym at ten years of age, yeah, I nicked this poster. Okay, I'll show you quickly. I've still got the poster now. It was a poster of Ryan Rhodes. Oh yeah, yes, boy, boy. So then, like, then it was about two thousands. I just started realizing about the internet, and you find it at box rec. So I started following him. I got to meet the dude later on in years. Yeah, got a picture sign with the picture. He's an yeah. absolute complete prick. Oh really? Yeah. So they always say that they don't meet your heroes. Mm. He's a fucking toss pot, mate. Mm. So that was a bit of a wounder. But that was <laughs> going into the gym. Like people say, oh, it was rocky. Walk into an amateur gym. Saw that picture of Ryan Rose, nicked it, followed his career. Ah, oh, mm. a good friend, Pete Jackson, is a pro, a local pro from his ex pro himself, good ex pro himself. Got me to meet him because he Pete boxed him twice. He's a fucking dick, mate. Really? So, well, why is that? He's just arrogant, mate. Like, yeah. I was stood there with a poster. If someone had a poster of me, I mean, like yesterday at a show, two little kids asked for a picture, mate, you're buzzing. Mm. You don't care if the kids even know your name. Somebody wants a picture of you. I'm mm. stood there from a poster of him for his first world title fight. Oh, I remember these. Just a fucking dick, mate. Yeah. But obviously, That's mate, so... Fun. But Kalzaki, mate, for me, was... Uh, I mean, he's a, he's the bollocks one, mate. Mm. I've met Kalzaki twice as a well-cracking bloke. I met mm. him at a show when fucking he's rushed the fuck. You just grab your picture and goo, yeah? And he, mm. saw my, he saw my T-shirt for me, mate, no problem. Mm. Cracking bloke, met him twice now. So, mate, he's just... Say that? Man, I, know, like, I love it, mate, when I get a attention, but... When you're washed up, mate, now, and someone's there with a poster from 20 mm. years ago when you were somebody, you'd pay a bit of attention, wouldn't you? 100%. 100%. That's I, mean, I think that's, that's a shame as well, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's funny enough, there's a story. So I used to, when I was um, when I was working full-time in one of, one of the gyms I was working in, someone met Ricky Hatton. That was his hero. That was his sort of, like, you know, that guy sort of go to. And he got the exact same sort of reaction. He said to me, don't ever meet your heroes, because he sort of just, yeah, he didn't get along. Yeah, with well, I've, I've met Tratton a couple of times as well, yeah. And um, mm. I met him first time. I paid to meet him at a, a body power show. We're mm. there, mate, and he's fucking, oh, you're right, trying to think. And then he's got to be 50 people he's paid to see. That's it, now I'm done. And he went to many years ago with Kev McCauley. I went to a pro show with Kev McCauley on a hat and promotion show. Kev boxed one of his lads. And he was nice to point to me then. I mm. think, mate, listen, they're just... It's all about what sort of mind frame they're in, don't they? I mean, and but listen, man, it's fucking, I don't know. That that always niggle me that with mate, because fucking mm. that like people say to me, I've got loads of man, oh man, watching Rocky, that got me into Bob. Nah. 
We've seen that post over on roads. I met him and he's fucking, but I'll put it up because listen, that was what started my journey as an amateur. Mm. You know what I mean? So Definitely. that's in my little, that's, that's in my little junk room, which this room was pretty good, man. I've got that much shit now. It's took <laughs> that many belts in no room. Yeah, so you're winning too many belts, mate. Need to no, keep, mate, need to <laughs> I've always said in my head, if I could win 20, I mean, listen, I'm only a gen, bro. I never go in there to, I'll get these total fights and I like the total fights, so I don't put my fans because it's a known job. Mm. If I get total fights, you do four or five rounds, yeah? That means I'm taking 500 big ones home. Mm. But that also means I'm still a journeyman. I've got to do my job. So it's never, you said, I was like, how many total shots you've had? I said to you, 50, 60. But you've only won 19 totals. That looks shit. No. What I'm allowed to win, brother? Oh, we'll fucking win, you mean? Mm, definitely. Like, so you said, you've just touched upon there, obviously, like how much you're paid as well. Like, do you get paid by the rounds that you're in, or do you get paid by the every fight? Pro, brother, every pro is different, you mean? Every, mm. All I will say, listen, I've got a good lot of pros. I get, I can earn, mate. Like, yesterday, I boxed twice, yeah? I walked over 700 quid. Mm. Some blogs can't earn that in the month, mate. They're struggling mm. that in the month, you mean? I'm in a good living, brother. I'm thankful, you mean? I'm, I'm very thankful. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I will get the odd fight. The at least I'll box through now. I won't box for no less than 250. Mm. Because listen, it's 50 quid fuel no matter where you go now. Mm. Okay. Then I want I want 200 quid for three rounds. You know I mean, so that's that's yeah. my that's my starting point. 250, mate. And then when you up the round, that's when I've checked the road. And it all depends on the lad. That's what you brother. I'd rather box a better lad, it's better money, and I know it's safer. I can I'd rather have somebody jab made off of six rounds than somebody. Mm. And I'm a fist in you and hugging you, and, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you see that a lot as well. I, I find someone who's got a wild swing, that's always clap, that's always going to clap someone at the back yeah. of the head. And that those are the ones, as you say, you see it in sparring all the time. Those people who just they just want to go in there and prove a point. Yeah. Like in comparison to someone who's quite skilled, it's so much safer to get in one of those you know, the skilled sort of fighters I find so much times. I mean, I I haven't um so I had like a layoff from boxing recently because I had to move and that sort of stuff. So I hadn't sparred for a long time, but I jumped in the ring with someone quite recently. And he was about, he probably had about 10 kilos on me, but he was really new sort of thing. But he was rapid swinging, that sort of stuff, which was all right for me because I could sort of move. But as you say, it's that getting that clock at the back of the head, man. Like, you yeah, just, it's, yeah, it's, it's horrible. Well, like I so, said, when I didn't spar, like last time I sparred, I did spar for this Jim McCauley fight. I probably went twice and done like, but when I spar, I do 20 rounds. I make mm. sure I get the rounds in. I get all my lads in. They've all got to do two with me each, you know what I mean? Mm. So, but my lads are a lot larger than me. And I said, listen, boys, it's not about knocking, it's not about going in there and swinging like fuck. We do that in the rings because I could knock all of you out, not being funny. It's about mm. you got to try shots, you want to try new things, try shots that you want to see if you can get working and don't mm. get hurt. You mean, so we're getting there, man. I'll give you 20 rounds with the lads, you mean. Mm. And then don't be wrong, when I get home, I think, fuck, man, I've still got it. I've done 20 rounds, but I'm making like fuck for the next three days. You mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing, isn't it? What do you normally sort of do to recover from your fight? Is there anything sort of like a specific sort of thing you oh, do, yeah. like stretching? Four, four cans and paracetamol. <laughs> I've always got a box of paracetamol in my bag, mate. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Um, we're, sort of, we're coming to sort of the close. I've just got a couple more questions. Um, I won't keep you too much longer. But um, one of the questions I've always sort of like, or one of the things I've always been intrigued by boxing is how small the boxing world is. But I mean, what would you say like your like, most interested not necessarily most well known but most interesting contact is like within boxing I don't know is that many I've got like mm. like I say when I box them well there's these five or six different parts of well yeah I'm not good with geography mm. brother yeah but you get to meet that many different people I mean there's a good friend of mine called Jenko he's doing a bit of prison sentence now but he's mm. trained the bare knuckle lads and uh one Sean George a good friend of mine great fighter bare knuckle um BKB Hall of Fame now as well on my head he's blonde bloke yeah, Sean George, yeah. So he just retired now, fought out a bad oil injury. But he yeah. was being trained by Vince Cleverly. So yeah. Vince Cleverly is Nathan Cleverly's dad. So when I've gone down the show then, I've got to meet Nathan. I've also yeah. met Joe Kazaki down there, met Enzo Kazaki. So it's just, mate, you just, everyone is always someone who knows someone, you know what I mean? Yeah. But look, there's yeah. that many people that I know and met extra pros. I mean, you know, Robin Reed's done my corner. My Polish house come out. He's put my, he's put my hair back into me. You know what I mean? There's some mad stories. I mean, Robert Williams, former WBC World Champion, you know what I mean? Yeah, crazy, mate. It's crazy. And obviously, I know you want to get to that 500 fight mark. When you get to 500 fights, do you think that's it? Are you calling it a day, or are you going to do? Truthfully, if I feel like I do now, brother, and I'm not going out, I'm going to keep going. But mm. I don't want to do that far, so like the legacy gets like a joke. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I know there's like my good friend Andy, because that poor fucker, he, he's 
he's had that many fights now. He boxed Cal Brook as a pro. Mm. I mean, he beat Terry Cook as a pro. He was under Pat Cardell as a pro. He was got shit on. Got into the white collar now. He's had that many bouts, mate. Poor fucker. He don't know where he's come or going. He's got to have had 2,000 fights. But no one around him. Everybody thinks now he's like, oh, it's only Cosy, you mean? Yeah. That to me is a fucking, is a, is a legend. But you, I want to keep it, mate, where I'm still good looking. I've still yeah. got these guns. And I, <laughs> I can say, look, that's fucking hard to give. That's a gift to kid, man. He's, he's fucking the dude, you mean? Yeah. So who knows? But uh, there's definitely going to be a book one day. 100%, so, man. 100%. I think that'd be so interesting as well because I mean, there's one thing. It's it's been like obviously I've been around the box around for a very short sort of period of time, so I'm still learning about sort of communities and so forth as well, as well as obviously everything else. But what I find so interesting is yeah, the, the amount of fights you have and just how routine it is as well. It's literally I feel like you train you so you have more fights than some people have at dinners. Do you know what I mean during the year? Which I think it's it's, it's crazy, but I think it's also admirable, and I think. To, yeah, to actually have that sort of documented, I think that'd be incredible. I mean, would you ever think about filming yourself, like documenting it sort of week by week? Well, I've got a good friend of mine, Danny Banks, been friends with me a long time. He's probably the longest friend I've got. We met when we were kids at a gym at 11, and we've stayed friends ever since. He don't box no more. He's a family man, got a good job and that, kids. But like he said to me, he goes, get on TikTok. You'd make yeah. a kid record yourself. I mean, every journey we're doing now is three, four hours. And I'm always fucking about the lads. And my cock's always getting slapped in someone's face or something. I mean, I'm a jack lad. There's always something going on. There's somebody getting food put on or something. Just record that bit of banter, then the war before the fight, then a bit of the scrap. I'd make a killing one night, but yeah. it just, I ain't that in front of the camera, mate. You know, but like, it's, mm. a, it's a good idea. But I don't mm. think I'll, um, I mean, look, most of the fights go on YouTube. I've got all the names written down. They can speak to the opponent, you know, all the proofs there. I mean, I think that's going to be good enough. Somebody will buy a book, mate, you mean? Definitely, I think so. I just think it's, I just think it's incredible, like as as, as you say, because where you've got it all sort of like documented out and sort of um, written out as well, it's more traditional than it is modernised as well. So where you're not in your face on YouTube every five minutes, I do find that adds a bit of mystery to it. I think that's what yeah. makes it intriguing. Um, I, I think it's I think it's awesome to be honest. Have you got any uh, career title fights coming up soon? No, mate. No, no. So Jimmy McCauley was the biggest one I had booked. Then we couldn't Jerry Gorman show. Great show it was. UBL show. Britain's hardest man. He's mm. the nephew of Bartley Gorman. The king of the proper king of the gypsies, yeah. Um, but as it stands now, I've got, I've got plenty. Of, I've said, I'm booked up to Christmas, but nothing significant where I've got to shout the name out. Just, just like just me turning up, mate. Might be allowed to win, might have the job, just getting the money. You know I mean, yeah. nothing in the pipeline there that I've got to think, shit, I need a little gym session. <laughs> um, and then obviously, like last day, so one, one thing obviously I wanted to touch on a bit. Obviously, you just said you've got gypsy roots, and obviously, you are gypsy. And um, have you had like traveler fights yourself? Not really, bro, because, like, listen, I'm a traveller, mate, born and bred, you know what I mean? Mm. But I don't have much to do with the travelling community anymore. Mm. So when my mum died, mate, me and my brother and a lot of the family, we voided. Then when my dad died, we sunk. So, mm. listen, just me, me partner now, Lisa, and my daughter, Phoenix, me, me good mates, that's it, mate. I don't really have the two community at all. I haven't fell out with them, mate, but it's best just to do your own little thing, you know what I mean? Mm. If I see a mate, I say hello and that, but, you know I mean? It's best to keep it the way. I say this very, like, you know, if someone hit me in the street now, I say, listen, 200 quid, I'm not punching you back. You know what I mean? <laughs> but listen, I'll, I'll get on with everyone, mate. I've got no enemies. I'll get on with everyone. You know what I mean? So there's no, no, no danger of that happening. Do you know what? That's one thing that makes me laugh, actually. I used to go to a, guy, a uni with a guy who was a boxer, and he used to say something similar. So people would start on him for random reasons. And he'd go, okay, sign the contract. And they'd be like, you what? And he goes, yeah, sign the contract. If you sign this contract, then we can fight. Yeah. <laughs> and it would, it would throw people they'd be, yeah, well, would, yeah. be like no nah, I'm not doing it but Jimmy <laughs> like I, I don't I don't fall out with no one brother honestly yeah. I don't know what I do if I fucking have a fight in the streets I don't hope it never happens because for me to fight in the streets someone's got to hit me Mr. Dummy Babby then it's game over yeah. then I'm yeah. looking at Jalsa and Jimmy so I'd rather that not happen yeah. but listen it's like I don't go in the intention to hurt anyone when yeah. I do drop someone there's no cheering there's no celebration they're like fuck me when he gets up I give him a cuddle then I'm like, yes, I've knocked somebody else out. You mean, but that's the buddy. It's all about, like, <laughs> my missus says to me, mate, she goes, how the fuck can you cuddle somebody up after just been trying to kill you? It's a sportsmanship and it's a brother, isn't it? You mean? Yeah, I, I think you're right there as well. And I think the, the one biggest praise is I can always sing with boxing is the discipline that comes for it, not even just in the gym, but outside the gym when it yeah. comes to composing yourself in those six, you know, those situations with someone. I often, I often sort of like, if I'm going to be honest, there's almost two types of men I've seen in, in this world nowadays. Got those who've been hit and those who haven't been hit, and obviously the latter version are normally the ones that will go out and try and start fights and have rows with people. 
yeah. those who've been inside a gym or just experienced fighting in their own sort of way won't go out looking for it and they'll almost try and find a way out of that sort of thing because you know your own sort of strength you know yes, you know yes. it's not worth it that's it bro that's it um, one last sec. question and then one uh, sec, I'll, I'll um, hey. go on hey yeah. I'm just doing my podcast your mum's asleep okay oh. I'm doing my podcast your mum's asleep okay, alright see you in a sec <laughs> uh, I've got dad duty today we're going to the cinema <laughs> Oh, bless you. That's right. I'll be two seconds. So, no, just right. one last one, obviously. I mean, we touched upon um, Usyk Fury. Who do you think takes that? Uh, see, instantly, I want to say Usyk. But look, Fury's twice the size of him. He's got yeah. an incredible boxer. I'd like to see Usyk win, but I think Fury's going to nick it on points. Yeah. But it will be a very, very boring fight and won't be worth paying for. So, I won't nah. be watching it. I'll catch up with it next day on YouTube. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do like, yeah. yeah. The women's boxing at the minute, unbelievable. Terry yeah. Harper, Chantal Cameron. Oh, man, there's so many good girls coming through at the minute. Unbelievable. Ebony Bridges. They're the fights yeah. that I do, I will pay or I will go to a pub with her on to yeah. watch them in. So. Definitely. Just a quick one on that as well. Just a shout out to Stevie Levy as well, actually. Because she yeah, got a title fight yeah. yesterday. And she's, yeah. as, as far as personalities go, as well as boxing ability, Mate, absolutely she's, up there. She's, Incredible. She's cracking. And she, I've got her on Facebook yeah. and Instagram. She's cracking. I don't know yeah. if but she's a guy. She's a squirrel. But again, yeah. Matt, another girl. Come from the white collar. Realise mm. she's not too bad at this. You got kids, she got you know, bring the kid up her own. Mm. Fucking bust her ass off in the gym. Now fighting for European titles and professional. Mm. That's what's about, man. You know what I mean? It's incredible. It's her little journey doing her own thing, isn't she? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, no, it's uh, her journey as well is really interesting because I think on top of like um, as you say of all that, she's just you know relentless and like the experience that she has, as you say, white collar to now. Like it, it goes to show, you know, you can go from white collar to <laughs> amateur to professional. As long as you sort of stay disciplined, sort of keep going with it. And I think, yeah, it's fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much, Isaac, for your time. I really appreciate no, it. Thank hey, you, sir. Pleasure, brother. You have an email thank back you on so much. I'll be a shot. All right, mate. All thanks, right. Isaac. Thank you, brother. All the best, yeah. All the best, yeah, about the action, being a max of fatal attraction Without the boiling bunny interaction I got the ladies and man them reacting Spit two, two bars, got them skanking Choose go too hard, I'm not ramping I'm juiced but my bars are banging That's the truth, my dog, I'm never lacking Made it out the black